Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was released way back in 2015, only one year behind the original two games, and it was extremely anticipated. The general fan base that Five Nights at Freddy's games were building at the time were extremely excited for this game, and even dug out immensely hidden secrets after the game only being released for a few hours. However, there was a major difference from the other games that many of us had noticed in terms of the game and how it works. In Five Nights at Freddy's 1, you were a security guard trying to get through your night shift while surviving five different haunted animatronics. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 was essentially the same, but this time you had those same animatronics and then some more, surviving a total of 11 animatronics, which was a big difference. However, in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, there is only one lone animatronics, which caused a lot of confusion for all of us. Now, there are phantoms that appear when your ventilation system goes offline, but they don't actually kill you in the end. They're just there to scare you and blare the alarms. That way, Springtrap, the only animatronic in the game, knows exactly where you are. But this was just a massive difference that nobody understood. Why is there only one animatronic? Nobody understood it, that is, until we learn the truth. This isn't just a game where we are surviving possessed spirits that are angry and vengeful stuffed into animatronics. You learn that you are in a real life or death game of cat and mouse with a rotting corpse of a serial killer who is possessing that exact animatronic that is working its ways down the hallway to your door, making that one single animatronic chasing you worth all of those 11 animatronics in the previous game. It made this one animatronic a big deal. Purple guy is no more. You you are the purple guy, and you just don't know it yet, because you are playing as none other than Michael Afton. There are many theories that explain in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 that you are playing as Michael Afton, and it basically has been confirmed over the years. This makes this game insanely intense. You are the killer's son trying to undo his wrong, trying to survive and destroy your own father after all these years of hunting him and him preparing for this day by just sitting in a dark room, wondering if he will and when he will ever get to kill again. You both have been waiting for this game of cat and mouse. Yes, there is only one animatronic, but it is the very antagonist, the entire story of Five Nights at Freddy's. This game is massively important whether people think it or not. If this game would have not existed, then I just don't think there would ever be peace for the vengeful spirits. Everything in this game, from the mini games to the actual gameplay to the wall code you can enter, it all has massive bits to the lore to it that are essential to the Five Nights at Freddy's universe, and we learned this. I know it isn't a fan favorite, nor will it ever be, but if you just sit down and really take a look what is behind the game's shell, you will find everything this game is about. And let me tell you, it is a universe that you have to explore. In terms of the horror aspect, I do find this game to be pretty scary. In my personal opinion, I actually do believe Springtrap is the most scary animatronic to me. Why? Well, because as I've mentioned, this guy in the suit is a 30-year-old rotting corpse that caused this entire series to even exist. It causes you to feel many different things, gives you ambition to move from night to night, just to hopefully be able to outsmart him and stay alive, just to be able to burn him down and right his wrongs and undo his doings. Oh well, guys, there it is. In a review perspective, I must say that if you guys haven't played this game, definitely do give it a try. It truthfully is the best in the series if you are someone who loves lore, because this game is absolutely jam-packed full of it. I know it isn't scary, but hey, who knows? Maybe it is scary to you, and perhaps you'll get some jump scares for yourself. Or maybe you'll just hunt down the lore and just break open the shell that the game actually hides in the background. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, why not consider subscribing and leaving a like, as it really helps out my channel a lot and helps me make videos just like this one. Thanks guys, and I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in my next video.